Welcome to this talk today for Info Drainage for Civil 3D. So we're going to take about 8, 10 minutes here and just look at the feel of Info Drainage, how it looks in Civil 3D, what are some different capabilities you can do with it. And this is going to be broken up into a few parts. So this is going to be a more of an introduction to the, to the tool itself. And then we'll be diving into little nits and nitty gritty pieces of it and break the videos up and so forth afterwards. So Info Drainage. Today's agenda, we're going to look at Info Drainage for Civil 3D, that extension, Info Drainage itself. And we're going to do an overview of Innovise, what their different offerings are, what we're going to see probably in the next couple of years. And uh, we'll just look at some of the interoperability, interoperability between Civil 3D and uh, Info Drainage. So if you saw last year, big acquisition by Autodesk, $1 billion, largest one in their history. And they're really diving into the water modeling sector, uh, the water modeling sector. And what, you know, if you've been using Civil 3D for a long time, it's definitely hasn't been the smoothest. Uh, so it's def the previous products haven't been the smoothest. They've had their, they've worked pretty well, but they definitely have their nuances of what they can and can't do. And there hasn't really been a product that's been in-house, so to speak, that they've been able to develop. It's been a lot of outsourcing that development from an already existing product. And so this is very exciting in terms of where Autodesk is going. So one thing underlying the acquisition is the largest in Autodesk history and is meant to put position Autodesk as a provider of end-to-end -end software for the operations of water infrastructure. So very cool and it's gonna be on the headlines for the, you know, the next foreseeable future. And uh, so a couple of things about the platforms. It's a little confusing, it's not too bad. If you've used Innovise, it probably comes, comes right to you, but there's four different offerings that are, that are part of the Innovise uh, platform. And they're all different prices and they're all different licenses. So there's Info Drainage. Design, optimization, and networks to mitigate flooding and meet regulatory requirements. Then there's InfoWorks ICM. Modeling and simulation of flood and storm water drainage systems and sewer collection systems. Then we get to the InfoWater Pro. So that's the modeling of water distribution systems to ensure clean drinking water. And then the last thing, InfoWorks WS Pro, in short, modeling of water distribution systems to ensure clean drinking water. So there's water or runoff, so to speak, modeling that. Then there's combined sewer. So we have sewer and we have storm water, and then we have pure drinking water. So a lot you can do with this platform. Today, we're just gonna be looking at info drainage. So let's jump out, let's get into Civil 3D. Let's do a couple picks and clicks. Yeah, bring some things into an in, in, into a info drainage model and just see how things look. So, all right, let's bounce into Civil here, and here we go. Yep. All right. Okay. So Civil, we got our file here. We got you know it's just a this is this is my office building. We got a surface here, and we just got a pipe network, a couple mill structures, and some uh, and some pipes. And so let's kick this to info drainage. So first thing, you notice here we got home tab, far right. This is the info drainage. If you have the license, you got it installed. You can see this info drainage tab. It's a fairly there, there isn't a whole lot in civil in terms of using it. It's just kick it out and kick it back in. So let's start with this, and we're going to say export to info drainage. So it's going to say select the info drainage file to export to. And we'll just select it and we'll just give it a name. We'll just call this video info file. Save that and we'll say next. And then we'll just grab that network one. That's the network one that I have in my file that you're looking at. And we won't grab the surface. We'll do that. We'll do that separately in the info file. So we'll say next here. And this is pretty cool. So it's, this is the part mapping. So you can see. It tells you what you have in Civil and what you're gonna and what info drainage will map that part to. So connections and then junctions. So connections are pipes. You can see we have concrete pipes, 12 inch concrete pipe, info drainage connection type. So you have an option of what you want to pick it as, pick it as a pipe, and diameter width 12 inches. And same thing right here. So you can see I just threw some null structures in. So Hard family, size, we have a null structure, info drainage type, circular, manhole, get a couple different options, and then diameter, length. Uh, so I think that would be like the three feet, 36 inch, uh, 36 inch opening of the manhole, pretty good size, but just for this, let's just kick this out. 
All right, and then finish. Let's go ahead and export this to InfoDrainage. So we're taking this pipe network right here and we are kicking it out to InfoDrainage. All right, so after exporting it, let's launch InfoDrainage. You can see right here, InfoDrainage 2023. All right, and let's give that a second to launch. InfoDrainage 2023, come on. All right, there we go. There it's launching. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up that pipe network. We're gonna bring a surface in. We are going to bring in our inflows so our it's not a catchment civil 3d we just pulled it from our line work so we'll bring that in and then we'll uh then we'll we'll add in some rainfall and then just run a model and see how things look so this is how it opens up there are some some nice tutorials with info drainage so i definitely encourage you to check those out so let's go ahead and open up that info drainage file that we just made info video info file okay so this is what we have in info drainage we have that pipe network that we at civil 3d we just brought it into info drainage I do find that the mapping seems to be better than, for example, with SSA, where it could be, you know, that was always an uphill battle trying to get that in there. So you can see, we can turn things off and on, our junctions, our connections right here. So we're just gonna leave them all visible. So let's go ahead and let's load a surface. So I kicked mine out of uh, Civil 3D with an XML. So we'll just bring in that Topcon building right here. And you can see, we're just gonna say, okay. And performance of the service may improve by retriangulating. Retriangulate now. So yes. Do you want to update existing exceedance cover levels using this surface data? Yes, let's update all. Okay, so you can see there's our surface right here. We can turn it off, we can turn it on. We also have the ability to make it a little bit less, uh, a little more transparent, so to speak. Turn off our surface cover fill and just leave our and just leave our you know the contours in there. So all right, so we have our surface in there now. Let's go ahead and let's create our inflows. So we'll import from CAD. And in CAD, I just created uh, different catchment areas. So let's go ahead and select. And let's go ahead and grab our, let's grab our inflows. So, and we'll just grab everything and we'll just say next. And we'll call select one item, catchment area, say finish. Okay, imported eight inflows. Okay, let's get rid of this one. All right, you extends. Okay, so now we have our catchments created. And you can see it did attach a couple of them. Oh, attach all of them actually, which is nice, automatically did it for us. And you can see there's all our catchments in our model as well. So we brought in our surface, we brought in our pipe network, and now we brought in our catchments. So let's go ahead and let's just connect our catchments. We'll just do it real quick. And we connect inflow. Let's see. Connect you to that inlet. Connect inflow. Okay. And now we're just doing this quickly here. We got that one's connected. See if this one's connect. That one is. That one is. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and let's uh, let's create some rainfall. So um, file right here. Plan. So we were in the import tab. We imported some stuff in there. Now let's go ahead and uh, create some SCS rainfall. So I'm just going to use a 50 year storm. And one thing that's a little bit different is it doesn't appear to have like that rainfall designer that it used to have an SSA where you know you can bring your rainfall in. So we're just gonna, I think around three and a half inches is a 50 year storm around uh, around Portland, Oregon. Might be a little bit big, but just for just for cons proof of concept, let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so let's go here to our preliminary sizing. So a couple different things that are kind of, that are nice here that I like. Um, so we can synchronize our manholes, invert levels. So let's go ahead and do that. 12, my, excuse me, 12 manholes in current phase have been synchronized. And then another thing we can do is we can do a quick store adjustment. So, <clears throat> so for our discharge rate, we can say like, eh, let's say 10 CFS. And let's go ahead and calculate. Oh, what happened here? Use plan data, filtration rate. Interesting, not sure what happened there. 
But anyways, you can do a quick storage estimate from your, from your model. And you can also do a water quality volume too. It gives you an idea of the total volume coming off your, coming off your uh, design. Let's see if this works. It should. Okay, so you can see, you know, with a, I think it was a four inch storm and our runoff coefficients, you can see we're at a 14,000 cubic feet. So, all right, so water volume has changed. Nope, okay. So let's go ahead and let's go to this build tab right here. We're not gonna build anything. I'll leave it all as is. And let's check out the analysis criteria. So similar to SSA as well, so our output interval. So this would be, I believe it'd be your reporting. So every five minutes we're gonna report, we can make it even shorter. So I like to, we, we can shorten that right down. I think the lowest is one. You can see it in a bias does a you know, one to 60 is your, your interval. Your time step, so I always use the shortest, but you know, it's just the more data, more data points you're going to create. And then we'll say OK right here. So you can see we have one storm that we have created. And let's go to our, this might run, but we might need to tweak our outfall. Let's see what happens here. OK, so if we validate, it says OK. So we should be good to run this model. So we say go and we're off and running here. And we're running that one 50 year storm. And okay, so this is our, this is where you get kicked out with right at the end, this is your connection summary. So you can see this is all items. So, and you can see these are all our pipes in our model right here. And this is, you know, this can be a little bit confusing because it will, you know, if you display all items, it'll only grab one storm. So you can say all storms. So for example, but let's see here. So you can see, we can look at our, you know, flow capacity, so pipe one, that's gonna be up towards the top of our top of our tree, less flow is gonna be in that. Pipe one, you know, we're at 0.1 flow capacity, and then you can see we get into a surcharge state towards the end, and as we get, unless we get towards the end. So, and then we go to our analysis, or excuse me, our results here. And this is where we can see, we can get, we get an idea of you know, our, our model. So our inflows. So you can see here's our total volume coming off each of the catchments. You know, keep in mind, we didn't, we didn't change any of the time of concentrations or any of the, you know, the surface data. So everything's, everything's the same. Okay. Well, everything's the same in terms of what's on that catchment, but the sizes vary. You can see our junctions right here. So it gives you a nice little status. For example, our storm event, same, we only had one storm. And it gives us our data, and then you can see our, you know, our, our max outflow, total discharge, and our status, okay, surcharged, flood risk. So, you know, we got some sizing that we, we, need, to, we need to take a look at. And, you know, it's all de dependent on that storm, too, so a pretty big amount of flow I put through there. And then you can see here are our items results right here. So this would be our time series plots, and these are always great. These are the these are the, the meat and potatoes of your data. So you can see here's our, and you can see here's our rainfall, here's our total inflow for catchment area one. And you can, you know, you can get, get, get to any of those. Same thing for your structures too. So let's see what structure, let's see what's our final. And this would be, all right, that's junction, let's see here. And that would be structure seven would be our outfall. So let's go to our results here and let's just see structure seven. And then you can see here's our volumes, our flooded volumes, depths, exceedance depth. And then you can also turn these off too to make it a little bit less busy. And then you can see our rainfall, total approach flow. So you can see it looks like it's pretty good. You know, you wanna see that bell curve in terms of the, you know, the rain, when the rainfall peaks, you wanna see things taper off, probably a little bit delayed in that, in that network. So overall, uh, I'm pretty impressed with uh, you know with with, with this in, you know info drainage uh, platform. Uh, you know, it's you'll find it's it's got, it's got the same feel as SSA. It's got, uh, it's got you know it's got some it's got some definitely has some different abilities to it, and uh, it seems to be pretty seamless with uh, how it um, how how it works with uh, Civil 3D as well, which is always nice. And then you have this option to so you, then you can export it back to Civil 3D, make those changes, 
do your hydraulic analysis, and then bring that model back into Civil 3D. So, hey, thanks for the time, and, uh, you know, stay tuned. Let me know if you have any things you want to see in Innovise as we learn more and more about it. But this is definitely going to be, you know, with Autodesk for the long haul, and uh, we're all going to be learning the ins and outs of this tool together. So thank you.